truly tackle poverty, we do need to reshape the economy. That's how we address not just the impact and consequences of poverty, but address the root causes, attack the, the problem at source. Now, I know you'll explore some other approaches later this afternoon which have the potential to do that. For example, looking at ongoing work, which I am uh, very, very committed to, to develop a minimum income guarantee and to support community wealth building. These are all really important initiatives. But our ability to do all of this is constrained by the limitations on the powers of our parliament right now. We are dealing with a cost crisis just now that has been made worse by the UK government's economic approach. Years of austerity that Scotland didn't vote for, Brexit that Scotland didn't vote for, an autumn of what I can mildly describe as economic chaos from a government uh, that Scotland didn't vote for. In addition, the Scottish government is so frequently having to mitigate the impact of UK government policies that people in Scotland don't support. Let me give you just one example of that. We are currently spending £87 million pounds a year to ensure that the bedroom tax doesn't impact anybody in Scotland. Far better to have a situation where we don't have these policies introduced in the first place rather than have to spend money to mitigate the consequences all of, them, all of them. So all of that leads, in my mind, to an obvious point. If our economy and our public services are suffering from policies we didn't vote for, if the Scottish Government is having to spend millions of pounds mitigating the impact of these policies, if we fundamentally disagree with how UK governments are treating those who most need help, for example, in the sanctions regime in Social Security and its frequent and quite shameful facility to asylum seekers, then why should we settle for simply mitigating these things? Wouldn't it be better if we could influence and take these decisions ourselves in the first place, especially as we have demonstrated already in the shape of policies like the Scottish Child Payment, how much better we can do when we have the ability to take these decisions. Uh, back in the 1990s, one of the reasons that Scotland voted for devolution so decisively was to stop damaging policies being imposed on us. But damaging policies are still being imposed on us and that democratic deficit has an impact in very real and very tangible ways on our ability to tackle poverty. So I think the best way to do that is to make sure that more of these powers of decision lie in our own hands. Uh, for the moment, however, and regardless of constitutional views and of our constitutional future, my uh, commitment and my message is clear. At the start of my remarks, I mentioned that early Poverty Alliance report and its reference to the consequences of abandonment of young people by the state. Uh, I think in, in many ways that phrase, the consequences of the abandonment of young people by the state, that phrase represents, if I was looking for a way to summarise, that is the phrase that represents everything that I came into politics to try to play a part in changing. And standing here 30 years later as First Minister, it also re-motivates me to do everything I can and everything my government can to support those who need it most. Uh, that's why we've introduced policies like the child payment, we prioritise resources to help those in crisis, and why we seek to put such a focus on measures that will tackle poverty in the long term. Uh, but it's also why I'm conscious of how much more we still need to do uh, to help people, not just through these current challenges, but for the longer term. And as we continue with that mission as a government, the Poverty Alliance, I know, is going to continue to play a vital role, just as you have done for these past 30 years. So I'm really uh, grateful to all of you for your insights, your expertise, for your challenge and for your criticisms that time a crucial part uh, of the scrutiny that is necessary to push any government forward in the right direction. Uh, you have changed lives over these past 30 years. That's something you should take great pride in. But there is still much for all of us to do. So please keep doing what you are doing, including the challenge and the criticism, so that together, collectively, we can continue to make progress to change lives for the better.